Hi there, I'm Danica Quinn and you are watching Falco K9 TV. We've had a really busy past couple of months here at Falco K9 Academy. Let's take a look at some of the things that we've been up to. I am so excited to be the new host here at Falco K9 TV and I'm so excited to be a part of this organization. I love working with dogs and so this is an absolute dream job for me. Take a look at a couple weeks ago we did our fourth annual bed bug detection dog academy with five students and their dogs and I interviewed Marlene who came all the way out from Dallas, Texas to Los Angeles and her dog was actually one of the successful graduates of the Academy. Yay! Congrats! Take a look at the interview. So she did very well. How did she do? Did she pass? She did well. She found him. She found them. She gave me the clues. There were some other times where I thought she was potentially alerting, but instead there was some food around. There were some distractions. She wasn't giving me her 100% alert. That She was giving me an interest um, and that's where I need to learn to discern between an interest and an alert and What's her alert? Um, her alert, she just beelines it. Her nose digs straight in. She'll start. She starts sniffing intently. You can just hear the, the lungs filling up, the nostrils really picking up the scent. Her tail starts wagging. When she gets in, when she catches the scent, her head whips back and forth. But it all happens so quickly, so incredibly quickly that you need to be on cue for that. And the first couple of times, I was more worried about me being in her way, not tripping on the leash, not holding her back, not trapping her into a corner. So there's a lot to manage. And Andy was saying that your your little Ellie could feel your stress at one point, that it's like a lifeline. The leash is a lifeline, like a direct phone line to, to the animal. And so were you kind of feeling a little on edge, a little nervous, and do you think that Ellie picked up on that? I do think... I know I was feeling a little bit on edge, a little bit nervous, and I do think she picked up on it. But I do not I do think that, again, her sense of smell is so keen that when she hit that scent, she was able to just go straight into, straight into the alert. But, yes, she probably was sensing that I was a bit – I was acting differently. She could feel that energy. She could feel – it wasn't the typical calmness that we have in other situations. And isn't that funny? Because to me, somebody who just met you, you seemed so cool, calm, and collected. And when Andy said that she was feeling the nervousness, it's so incredible how animals can just instinctively pick up on just the littlest, you know, feeling a little bit insecure or a little, a little bit, you know, worried about the situation. Absolutely. In voice and tone and body language, demeanor and breathing patterns, whatever it may be. So tell me, how did you find Andy? Because you actually, you came from Texas. You made the trek all the way from Texas to come out here to train with Andy. How did you find out about, about this Falco Academy? Well, I looked on the internet and um, made a lot of phone calls. A lot of phone calls, did multiple searches with organizations out of Florida, some out of Kansas City, some out of Canada, um, some, all, some out of Ohio, all over the place, and interviewed extensively interviewed, took notes, called multiple times, and was interested more in their methodology of training. And what was their approach? What was their background? Were they flipping these dogs almost like a puppy mill, or were they actually spending the time and putting the training and putting their name behind it? And I was very, very pleased with the Falco Academy training philosophy and their concept and Andy's background coming from law enforcement, um, a militaristic almost, if you will, approach to to the business and passing that on to the animals and to, to the people to, that he trained. So I was very impressed with that. So that's kind of what made him stand out amongst all the other academies. Yes. Yes, and his personality, he was, he's like, we're here to help you succeed. You know, we will answer every call you have, answer the phones, get back to you. We, we, it was the customer service wrapped up with the philosophy and methodology. And it's so important. It's like the lady at the front desk, the receptionist. That's, that's the first impression that you get of somebody's business. So I, I think that that is absolutely key, and I think it's good that he has really good customer service, yes. like you just said. Yes, and the customer service could be phenomenal, but you could have a horrible product. But in this combination, there's a in this situation, there's a combination of both that they the customer service and the product. All right, the search that we just witnessed was the first search that I'd ever seen, and I have to say, to watch it in person was one of the most incredible things that I've ever witnessed. These canines 
can actually sniff out these little tiny bed bugs. These are bed bugs here that I'm holding. It was incredible and all these people had come from all over to visit Falco Canine Academy and so that these people could train their dogs how to search for these little tiny bed bugs. And it's a worldwide problem. I didn't realize that bed bugs were such a problem. It's kind of gross. But that's why you need to come to Falco Canine Academy. Because we don't want this problem anymore. We need to rid hotels. We need to rid the world of these little blood suckers, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Lux! Road! Good. Holster. I'm here with Andy Falco, the director of Falco Canine Academy. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here at the Academy. We have a ton of stuff going on, always. Uh, we have our, uh, actually we have a new contract coming on board. I almost forgot about that. They're from Desert Hot Springs Police Department. Well, how could you forget about the police yeah. department? <laughs> no, we've been so busy with those stinking bed bugs. It's like, it's <laughs> crazy, but we're so happy to have another police department on board. Welcome aboard. Yep, next Thursday we'll be dedicating the dog to the police department. Now, dog. which dog? He's a very special dog. His dog's name, the dog's name is Tonto. Tonto, and he's been here at the Academy for? Oh, about uh, three or four months. Uh, okay. Just getting him ready. We were waiting for a police department that needed a dog, and it just so happens that Desert Hot Springs came on and signed a contract, and they're getting Tonto. Oh, you must be sad to see him go. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me a little bit about some of the classes that you have going on and coming up. Well, of course, we have pet dog classes that we train on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. Okay. Uh, we always have intermediate and advanced going on, always. Do you have Saturday. basic? Yes, we have a basic starting. One of them is coming to an end now, and because of Christmas, we're going to take a little bit of a break. But on January 5th, a Wednesday night at 6.30 night, one basic dog class starts for eight weeks. And then we have another one starting on Saturday mornings, and that's another eight weeks, and that's on January 8th. And what does this class cover? Is it basically for pet dogs that have certain behavioral problems? Like, do you teach them how to sit, how to kind of potty train them? What do you, what do, you do in the, the classes? Yep, it's about basic obedience, manners, and teaching the human being leadership to their dog. Mm. Because our tagline, again, is human training for your dog. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we take the human through the process of teaching obedience and teaching the dog that the humans are in charge and the leaders of the pack. And uh, we handle everything from aggressive issues to manners, you know, not sniffing people where they don't want to be sniffed. Yeah, that's not And good. jumping on them and tangling the line around their, uh, their legs and oh, tripping and that kind of stuff. My dog has all the above. Where do I sign up? I need to <laughs> sign up. Get her enrolled real quick. Call her office and talk to Sherry. She'll get you all <laughs> Okay, up. good. Yeah. Hear that? Call the office, talk to Sherry. For pet dogs, behavioral problems. So yeah. now moving on to canines who are police dogs or who are training to be um, you know, in, in looking for narcotic or bomb detectors. What, what kind of classes do you have to offer those dogs? Well, everything is kind of in response to a need. So if we have a new contract like uh, Desert Hot Springs Police Department, we begin the process of training the dog. We'll import them from Europe, bring them down here and start training them for them, and then put the handler through an academy at, at a date that kind of coincides with the progress of the dog. If there's a need for bed bug detection dogs, we um, will then set up a time uh, that we will uh, schedule for an, an academy for everybody to fly in and, and meet their dogs and start the process of learning about that. So everything right now is on a, on a need basis. We are going to set up a schedule for 2011 for all of our bed bug detection dog academies. So we should have that in mind. So keep a lookout. But so obviously there's a need though for bite classes because you also have some bite classes coming up. Yep, for the protection dog or the person that wants to make their dog a protection dog. Of course, not every dog can do that because if they already have fear problems or aggression issues, we don't want to add to that by teaching them how to bite. Mm -hmm. So we uh, will uh, evaluate each dog individually and see if it can do the, the job. And what we do is we teach the dog how to play and pray uh, how to bite the equipment. And so mm -hmm. what basically we're teaching the dog is how to bite the equipment that the decoys are wearing. So it's really more about the equipment than biting human beings. Is it specific to certain breeds? Like, would you prefer the larger breed dogs or can smaller breed dogs come in and take that class as well? Well, really almost any dog can do it, but there's dogs that are gonna be a lot better at it. We've had a Boxer do it, we've had a Malamute, uh, wow. and then of course the German Shepherds and Malinois. Uh, but uh, we also have this little tiny dog uh, named London who we're going to do the bite work with. I met London. But it's obviously not serious, but it's, it'll be fun to teach the dog how to do that protection work. London's adorable. He yeah. likes to give kisses. <laughs> All right, well, welcome aboard to the new police department. And that pretty much sums up the uh, happenings and the news here at K9. Academy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, go Canine Academy. I'll help I'm out. new. <laughs> I'm new. What can I say? Falco Canine Academy. Okay. I have a little bit of dyslexia. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good luck to you and we'll see you guys next time.
Well, that wraps up my very first episode here at Falco K9 TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to many, 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 many more episodes here at Falco K9 Television. So be sure to stay tuned. Later, dog. K9 Academy. Falco K9 Academy. It's Falco K9 Academy. <laughs> I'll get it right. <laughs> Did I say it right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay.